Just like those seconds don't seem like they take forever too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like watching a pack. Second, boil. second delay. It's like, oh.
if you need to. It's the second Sunday of Lent, and uh, Lenten worships are on Wednesday evenings at 6.30 p.m. They will be held in person here at CTK and also online. Our regular Sunday service will remain at 9.15 a.m. We are selling Easter lilies and mums in a variety of spring colors. There are order forms available on the welcome desk. If uh, you're looking for someone to help with the maintenance of our farm equipment, so let us know if you are uh, have those gifts and talents and you are willing to share them with us. Um, a member of the church is looking for a ride to and from church. Please let us know if you are able to help. Crafty friends are meeting today at noon. They meet until 5 p.m. Bring your own project to work. Join them for the full day or just part of the day. The newest Christ in Our Homes devotional is available on the communion table. You pay attention to this one. If you are in fourth through sixth grade BYD, it is meeting Friday, March 18th at 6 30 p.m. here at Christ the King. You are welcome to break the bread. Um, on Sunday, March 20th, they, the high school youth group will be having their first youth group meeting in a very long time. So if you are in ninth or 12th grade, please join us for that. It's time to direct your private choice dollars. The Donut Bowl Gang is asking you to consider directing the dollars to Christ the King combined locks where you used to purchase a digital electronic sign. See the newsletter for more information. Our weekly newsletter is delivered on Thursday directly to your email inbox. Check it out for more information on what's going on in church. If you don't receive it, please let us know. You can call us at 920-788-6492, and we can get you signed up for that. Thank you so much, and have a great week.
seating sections, and then we go to the outside and come up then these middle aisles uh, to return to our seats for those of you who wanted to come forward for uh, an individual blessing, which is a little bit more of our Lutheran theology is to bless you with the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. And so uh, thank you to the many volunteers who are helping out this morning to make worship happen. And I give thanks that our crew came this morning to clean up the parking lot as well. Who knew that we'd have so much snow today? Um, they I think they were a little surprised too when I called them and they said, thanks for reminding us, we'll be right over. <laughs> yeah. As we uh, head out today, there are some donuts that are individually wrapped in the back. Um, I didn't count how many there were, but I think it's more than a dozen. If you are interested, please pick that up as you are on your way out today. And one other really special announcement, and I think we need to give a great thunderous applause for 68 years of marriage to Chet and Betty Bundy, who are gathered with us today. Thanks be to God for love like that. Amen. 
Amen. We continue together with the prayer of the day. God of the covenant, in the mystery of the cross, you promised everlasting life to the world. Gather all peoples into your arms and shelter us with your mercy, that we may rejoice in the life we share. In your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Today's gospel reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often I have des desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you are not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Congregation may be seated. Thanks, Roger. I don't know how many of you these days have chickens. Uh, especially urban chickens are really popular now, right, in the city. Anybody? No? Nobody? Chickens? Oh, there we go. Chickens back there. Yay. <laughs> I grew up with chickens, and um, uh, we had a number of years, and I remember my chore was to go collect the eggs. And so I'd make my way out in the morning before school and getting on the bus at a very early hour to go out and collect those eggs first thing in the morning. Yeah. It's and every once in a while, it was a pretty easy thing to do. But you can't be intimidated by the wings of a chicken when you enter in and they might be flapping them or, or if they're in a certain mood, they might try to peck at you uh, or do something that you don't want them to do. But most cases, you can just nudge them out of the way and grab an egg for it too. There's a Lutheran pastor who remembers doing that as a well, and he could hear the motion near the hen house as uh, he was getting close to gather eggs. And it was just as he was getting there that he saw one of the hens uh, coming out while many of the others were, were getting all their little ones under their wings. It came out with a big snake in its beak. Mother hens will protect their young. And they will put themselves at harm or in harm's way in order to save those chicks. That is what God does for us. God is our refuge. God is our strength. God is the one who will not let this world sin, evil, or death win. And so today, as we hear about Jesus in our gospel today from St. Luke, Jesus is talking about how uh, he is that mother hen. That mother hen to bring up our children of God in to protect and to care for them along life's journey. Jesus is the of all who are gathered together in this Jerusalem city that he has come to protect, to save, and to care for. God's mothering figure and idea for us today is a reminder of how God is caring for us each step along life's journey. That's better. 
God welcomes each and every one of us. And there is nothing, nothing that can separate us from that love of God. The image you see on the screen here is Jerusalem. In fact, we have a couple of members who should be arriving to the Holy Land as we speak. And we hope that they had safe air travel and will be safe in their time as they enjoy the footsteps of Jesus and the disciples and many others who are before us. Now when you wake up, you see, uh, I remember waking up when, when I went to Jerusalem back in seminary days, and this is what I saw. This beautiful gold dome that is where the Temple Mount used to be, that is now a mosque that is there for our Islam, Islamic brothers and sisters. But it is still in that spot and is very holy, and you have the opportunity to go inside and to check out and to pray alongside with those who are gathered. It's an amazing place to visit. Jerusalem is the holy city. It is the largest city in Israel and has been for many years. It is the center for religion. It is the center for uh, politics. It is the center of commerce for this small little country of Israel. Jesus today says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Very lamenty. Why have you gone astray? Why are you going wrong? Why is it you are the place that kills the prophets and those who are sent to you? Why is it that you can't be a place that is an example of love, an example of who God calls us to be as children of God, but yet you are a center and a place where there is much disruption? where evil lurks around the corners in some of the most holiest places of this city. Why can we not be drawn together under that protective and wing of this mother hen? Jesus is sharing how he has come to be that wing, if you will, to protect, to save, and to care for. This is the place where Jesus was dedicated, but it'll also be the place where Jesus will die. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, an amazing, amazing city, but it just doesn't seem to get it right. There is conflict in Jerusalem amongst the religious people. There is conflict amongst the empire and the people. There is conflict that is going on when Jesus will enter it in the day. Is there any conflict in this world today? Yeah, Ukraine, Russia. That's the number one, at least on our list, but there are many other places in this world where there is conflict and where there is disruption and where there is pain. Perhaps maybe even in your own lives. I want you to know that God is with you. And you are to be under that care of the wing of that mothering God for you today and in the days to come. For Jesus says, I am going to heal today and tomorrow will be complete. He is sharing how in three days he will rise from the dead when that time will come. Jesus will take care of business, if you will. He will be that protective wing for each and every one of us as he will sacrifice his life. And nothing, no thing can keep us from that love of God in our day. In that holy city, there are broken relationships. There is brokenness of hearts. There is brokenness all around. So Jesus laments that people can see and relate to as we can today. Our divisions are amongst us. And Jesus calls us to come together, to be one with each other. Now, to go back to the story about chickens, chickens lay about one egg a day. And when they get to a certain point, they stop laying eggs and then they have a clutch of eggs. 
I don't know, it might be five, it might be eight, it might be a dozen, and then they, they incubate those eggs, they sit on them to keep them warm so that at some point all of them uh, will hatch at about the same time. But until they get to that clutch point, uh, they, they will allow you to take those eggs. But there is a certain point where physiologically the mother hen will change. She'll get a little broody. And that's when Mother Hen will peck at you and say, you're not taking my eggs today. I have work to do in order to produce chicks. And it is the, it is the, uh, the intention of the broody hen, right, to protect and care for these ones, especially after they hatch. Jesus is a little broody today. As he's speaking to Jerusalem and as he's sharing this message uh, from God of how he has been sent and why he is here to protect and to save and to give life to all, even all who disagree in Jerusalem today, even all who disagree today, masking, unmasking, um, whatever else, vaccine or unvaccine or not vaccinated, a lot of conflict in our day, but how do we see one another with all that judgment and know that we are under the protection of the wing of that mothering hen? That is the work, my friends, of the church, of each and every one of us who are gathered today. To share this message of Jesus being that broody, broody hen who is there to protect us who is there to defend the wilds of the world and the evil that lurks in this, this place. Not this place, but in the world. Jesus is there for us. So I'm going to ask you to go to the slide with Jesus and his eyes. Jesus is really, really hyper-focused. And this is a, a drawing of Jesus' eye, and as you can see in Jesus' eye, there is a Jesus knows that as, as he was lifted up in Jerusalem as a young one, he will have to return to Jerusalem to die on the cross. To die for our sins, to die as that ultimate sacrifice to make atonement for uh, the evil that we do in our day in which we have confessed our sins and asked for that forgiveness. It is now Jesus who has his mind and his eyes set on Jerusalem and he will not deviate. The people of Jerusalem, the religious people of the day, the Pharisees who are in reminding Jesus to get away for that foxes after him. For the disciples who will try to tell Jesus, we don't want you to die yet. And to others who will try to tell Jesus what the right thing is to do, but he has his eyes set on Jerusalem. He knows that he must go to Jerusalem in order to suffer and die at the hands of people, of the religious people, and die so that in three days, his work will be complete. The ministry to those who are hurting, the division that is there even in Jerusalem, the holy city, people will be brought together. It is Jesus who will not deviate from the reason why he was sent to be here on earth. In this Lenten season, we will continue to be stepping toward and closer to Easter, which is the day of his resurrection. Now, I've been asked already here in this Lenten season, do we really have to have Good Friday? Good Friday is the day Jesus is put on the cross and is crucified and dies. We can't have Easter if we don't have Good Friday. The answer is we can't have Easter without a Good Friday, a death, and in three days a resurrection of Jesus. I know a lot of you are getting ready for Easter, so we, yes, have to have a Good Friday. That's why Jesus came, and that, was, that is what he is set to do. And I think if you're like me, we don't want to see anybody suffer and die. But Jesus is willing to do that for all of us. For all of God's creation. For everyone, even those who don't agree with 
Jesus today. There is nothing, nothing that can separate us from that broody love of this mothering head, who is Jesus, who is our God, who is the one who is there for us. Jesus is that mother head. Jesus is our refuge today in the midst of the things that we are up against. But no matter what you face, Jesus is with you to walk alongside of you, to protect you, to bring you under those wings. Pull one of these feathers out. You know the saying, light as a feather, right? How can that protect us from anything? It is so light, more stronger than that, with just our hands, yet it is a feather put together in those wings that is stronger than anything that this world can throw at us. And we are called to be under that protective care. And we are called to bring others under that care when we are sent here today. There is room for another person. There is room for many more under that broody wing of that mothering hen, Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit. May we put our trust and may we use our love in such a way as Jesus did to welcome the world who can be at times divided and disruptive to the daily goings on. But God calls us to share this love, this refuge with one another. Amen. We continue this morning by affirming our faith through these wonderful words that Sanctified Heart provides. As you are able, let us stand and share these words of affirmation. Here we go. The Lord is my light. The Lord surrounds me like a warm, familiar quilt in layers of grace. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the sturdy foundation and the roof over my head. I am not afraid. When the world is at its worst, when grief clings to my bones, when fear eats at my confidences, when loneliness moves into my house, God sets the table, turns on the lights, and invites me to dance. So even though there are days that feel like too much to bear, I know I am not alone. So I ask the Lord, I seek and I pray. Let me live in your house all of my days. Amen. We'll sing Jesus Still Lead On. This is a part of our prayer song. We will sing that first verse. We will then offer prayers and then sing the third verse. Let us sing. Even in the 
face of opposition and to protect those whose lives are imperiled by the gospel. Gracious God, you create the entire universe and you have called it good. Hinder those who would cause further conflict and seek destruction towards people, towards our planet's fragile ecosystems, and towards those relationships that are so fragile. We ask that you provide an advocate, whether that be us or someone on our behalf, that we might be good stewards of this world and of relationships which you call us into that your peace may be known throughout this world. Gracious God, you raise up leaders committed to love and committed to justice. Nurture in those who govern. Give them patience to receive the criticisms that they receive and openness to new ideas and courage to change the course when needed for the sake of the common good for today as we pray for the people of Ukraine caught in the middle of war where disruption and evil is upon them. We pray that President Putin might find a way in which to put down weapons and that everyone may be gathered at the table to find a peaceable way in which to for conflict that may be within our lives or in our day. Help us to look to you, our strength and our rock, and that mothering hen who has the strongest wings of all to care for and to be willing to lay down one's life for us. Help us to put our trust and our hope in you. Gracious God, we give thanks that you attend to us every step along the way. And as we think about relationships and as we think about love, we give thanks for Chet and Betty for 68 years. We pray for many others who celebrate their anniversaries and the love that they share, that you will continue to sustain and uphold their love. Help us to seek you along life's journey. For those who are hurting in these days, for those who are suffering from PTSD, for those who need your help in something that seems insurmountable. Give us the faith to call upon you and to see how it is that you, God, direct and lead us today. Gracious God, we take a few moments now to open our hearts and to share our prayers aloud or in the silence of our hearts.
We take a few moments to share that peace, the signs of peace with one another, and those we are gathered with today in worship.
receive now this blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. May we say amen. 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 We will continue with our ascending song by Holy Wings as you are able to stand and sing. Wi-Fi connection, whatever you might have. 